guys, welcome back to RIP Superchargers and thanks for stopping by. So if you are stopping by, you might be looking for some more power for your 2016 to 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee equipped with a 3.6 liter V6 or better known as the Pentastar. And that's what we're here to show you, right? You're seeing some really nice power over here and that's the power that our 2020, our in-house tester, uh, made with our supercharger components. So we're starting the video off a little bit differently. There's no surprise reveal. Uh, what we've been noticing is a pattern, and the pattern is uh, this interaction that our YouTube videos and our social media and our emails is getting where our clients are getting more engaged with uh, our, our process of answering questions. We really do take the time to answer each and every email, each and every post, and each and every uh, you know, little tag that we get because it's important to us to know that you're having a good time and that you're being well informed, and that's actually the way we presents our products. It's the information that's the power. It's the demonstration of the product itself that is what sells the product. I don't have to, you know, have missiles go by and fireworks in the background. You know, basically I come up here, you know, I put this car on this really expensive machine here behind me. I show you what it does before and then I show you what it does after and then uh, hopefully you guys are well informed. And so thank you for subscribing and liking and please do if you like what you see. Uh, so let's get right into it. Uh, the 2016 to 2021 is a big one. Uh, it's the most anticipated kit that we've had. People have been asking for this kit because, well, one, uh, there's an enormous amount of value in the vehicle itself, and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, and people want to know why it's the only one we sort of missed. And, and so it's very simple. Aside from the world being a little crazy, but the real thing is that this vehicle mechanically is different from the entire other lineup. You don't know that because you think, well, it's the same Pentastar. But when you look at it from an engineering standpoint, it actually is its own system. Uh, brackets, pipes are not crossed over. Yes, the intercooler and the injectors are the same. Uh, you know, the map sensor even works in here as well. Uh, but the tuning is an enormous uh, change compared to the other vehicles. And I, I guess as these vehicles get newer and whatever it is that Mopar is doing on their end, you know, they threw us quite a curveball and we knew that and we knew it was going to take some time. So since we do own this vehicle, as I mentioned earlier, I drive this vehicle on daily. Now this is my fifth or sixth uh, WK2, I've owned SRTs, 5.7s, you know, older and newer uh, uh, 3.6s, uh, but that's what takes the longest, right? Essentially what happens here is that, yes, we have to get into the mechanical engine, you know, uh, engineering of it, yes, we have to develop cut and weld and stuff like that, but we take a lot of pride in our tune. A lot of people, I would say 99% of our, you know, of over 10,000 kits that we've sold, drive on our stock tune. So if you are new to RIP, uh, we've sold well over 10,000 supercharger kits, mostly, if not all for uh, 3.6 liter powered vehicles. We're the first ones in the world to supercharge a 3.6 liter. So you gotta keep that sort of really much in focus, right? We're the guys who started the trend of making more power out of this vehicle in this specific vehicle. And we have more vehicles on the dyno uh, in every configuration and all of our competitors combined. Okay, so that's a big one you wanna sort of take into consideration. Behind that gate there is actually the first supercharged 3.6 liter in the world, right? That's uh, in the form of our Jeep. Uh, it's a 2012 Jeep Wrangler JK. It has its own life on Instagram, uh, Ironhide JK with a Y. Uh, and you could see that it's been really around the country in different circumstances. Uh, and it's still running on the same engine, stock engine, stock transmission. It's a very heavy JK. So now it's up on 44 inch tires, uh, which is a testament to the componentry. Um, that's the next question, right? We see this turmoil that the client has, the potential client has, or you guys as owners of these cars, right? Uh, should I just sell it and get another vehicle, or should I this, or should I that? And that's a huge question. I mean, you know, I get it. You know, I've owned almost every single vehicle that, uh, you know, FCA, Mopar, Chrysler, Dodge Jeep, whatever, every name you could throw at it, right, has. So, uh, you know, we've had a Ram with a V6, we had a Ram with a 5.7, we've had SRT Jeeps, we've had cars, 5.7 cars. We have a lot of different vehicles in our gamut just to uh, make sure that the components that we make deliver an experience that is what the, you know, the potential client or you um, should be experiencing. So that's, that's important that we drive and own these vehicles. And they're not just vehicles that we borrow, have them for a half a second, and then they, they go off just in, in, for the sake of making a component. So that's a, that's a big one. So tune development is something that I take very seriously. This vehicle drives with me every day. You know, uh, it's already put 7,000 miles on the supercharger itself. So we've been kind of quiet about it. These videos don't exactly go as we, you know, as we, 
uh, you know, develop the car. When it's at the end here and we're finally proud of the number and we see consistency, that's when it is we start launching you know, this type of marketing into the vehicles. It's not like this pre-launch or anything like that, okay? So this vehicle itself has logged uh, 50 passes, over 50 passes on the dyno. So keep that in mind, right? It's not just one and two passes and then do a street tune and then you leave. You know, it's got real development time, gear and gear, time and time, you know, so that's that. Um, value versus getting a new car, you know, that's a big one. We see that one come up a lot. So that's the one I want to touch on for a second here before I get into the components in the vehicle. Just let me take two minutes of your time. I've owned several, like I said, uh, WK2s and I absolutely love them, okay? Uh, I think there's a lot of value in the vehicle itself depending on how you have it, you know, uh, outfitted. This one has laser cruise control, heated and air conditioned seats, you know, the air ride, it's a Trailhawk. And, and I really like it. I like the color, I like the stripes, I like the interior. You know, my family loves it. It fits my family really well, plus dogs, so no problem. Uh, so would I consider supercharging it over, let's say, getting another vehicle? And I, since I've owned so many, right, and, and, and you know, let's, most people say, should I just go get an SRT? Because 393 horsepower is at the wheels. So I want, I want to really touch that because a lot of people mistake this. The, the last time you saw this vehicle, you saw it on a dyno, and that's this pass down here, this purple one. Okay, it's 216 horsepower at the wheels. Now you start saying, wait a minute, my vehicle comes with 290 or 290 and change. Okay, it does, but that's at the engine. That's at the engine alone. Like if you take the engine out of the car, it makes 290 horsepower. Then when you put it in the car and you put like power steering and air conditioning and a water pump and like a car around the engine, that's called drivetrain loss. And drivetrain loss ends up being 216. And that's with our 20% more powerful coils. So it made a little bit less than that, about 10 horsepower, 11 horsepower, less than that. So you guys driving around your car, wondering whether or not you're going to supercharge your vehicle, you're driving around about 210 horsepower, maybe a little less, a little more, you know, depending on the day. Okay, that's what you're driving. We are now making 393 horsepower at the wheels. That is a 88% gain. Okay, so that subsequently, if you look around in one of these links someplace, and I hope the guys put the link someplace, right? We tested a factory, my 2016 SRT, and it made 386 horsepower at the wheels. 386 horsepower at the wheels out of a 392. 393 horsepower. So you can see the value here, right? So if you don't have to jump into a new car, a new set of insurance rules, a new set of car payments and all that, and you really love your WK2, the RIP Supercharger is a pretty cool way to offset that, right? I mean, Hemi noise is Hemi noise, right? Let's, let's face it, right? You, you can't duplicate that. And I won't argue with you because, hey, Hemi sound awesome. I'm a big Mopar fan, so I get it. Man. You're not going to get that, but you are going to get 22, 23, 24 miles to the gallon on this vehicle when you drive it sort of like normal and not always in it, which is something you can do, right? You, maybe you can't, but you can. You can get that gas miles out of this car. But what I'm saying is you can't get that out of an SRT because I've owned them. They get 16 on a good day. I mean, like on a good day and 11 normally. So they pass everything on the highway, but a gas station. So yeah, there's a ton of value there in the supercharger. So what do you get with the supercharger? And that's the big deal. So thanks for listening and here we go. So a RIP supercharger is a complete system. You don't have to buy anything else, okay? So it comes with this awesome centrifugal supercharger when in it itself is fantastic. I go into deep dive on this one on the frequently asked questions video. You should check that out. It's a very good video. It's got like 700,000 views. It's got a lot of information. Go check that one out, okay? Centrifugal superchargers are awesome. They're self-contained but they make power and they're really light to turn. See, I don't really have to put a lot of power into this one to spin it. And that's how you make power. Air goes in, magic happens, boost comes out. Through the piping comes an intercooler. The intercooler cools the air, right? Going in, out of the supercharger into the engine. All the piping is pre-cut. You don't have to cut anything. Your installer doesn't have to cut or lip anything. It's ready to fit the car. Silicone couplers, stainless steel uh, clamps, uh, a blow valve from Vortec, which the valve alone is very expensive. It's a race valve. And then right into the throttle body. Injectors, map sensor, tuning, little auxiliary parts that you know, are supporting components. You don't have to make anything, so it's a complete kit. That's it. That will bring the vehicle up from 216 horsepower at the wheel to 293, which is <laughs> SRT power and blows, app, I'm sorry, 396 horsepower. What? and blows five sevens away. So think about that, right? Because five seven guys are always in there kind of going, well, what about us? Well, modified naturally aspirated 
five sevens make 296 horsepower at the wheels with some pretty expensive components on it. And yes, you could put a supercharger on a five seven, but again, the argument is, do you have to go to another car? I think we demonstrate here with this vehicle that you can invest into this vehicle in terms of longevity, in terms of reliability, in terms of a company that stands with integrity behind the components that it sells, and we demonstrate it pretty well across the entire board. So in that, I'd like to close it. If there's anything I didn't cover or you feel you need to have, it needs attention, put it in the comments, send us an email, www.rickmods.com, Instagram, Facebook, so you're gonna catch us or just give us a call because we pick up the phone. So thanks for stopping by.